Okay, I just came back from seeing the new Joker film in theaters, and to say that it was nothing short of legendary would be an understatement. As you probably already guessed it, that is what we're going to be talking about in this video. Today, Joker Review. Coming at ya! Hello to all my geeks and nerds, Dante D here, and welcome to the channel where we talk about comic books and other geek stuff. Before we get into this video where we talk about the awesome new Joker film, I just wanted to let you all know that this review will not contain spoilers. I just wanted to give you a few reasons why you should get out and see this film even if you're not a fan of comic book movies. So this film here clearly stars Joaquin Phoenix who plays a struggling comedian named Arthur Fleck who is ultimately consumed by madness and becomes the Joker. And I must say, Joaquin Phoenix was so effectively cast for this role. We've seen Joaquin Phoenix in other quirky slash crazy roles in the past, like Commonist and Gladiator, and a very lonely, socially awkward man in her, who uh, ultimately falls in love with his uh, OS system. Besides Joaquin Phoenix, a few other actors were considered to play the Joker, most notably Leonardo DiCaprio when Martin Scorsese was still involved in the production of this film. However, the role ultimately went to Joaquin Phoenix and I think he did a great job. Had Leonardo DiCaprio uh, been given the role, I think he would have done a great job too, but Joaquin Phoenix's Joker and Leonardo DiCaprio's Joker that we never saw probably would have looked markedly different. Joaquin Phoenix is a method actor who I think provides a very, very fresh and original portrayal of the Joker, one that we have really never seen before. As a matter of fact, when Joaquin Phoenix was preparing for this role, he not only lost a whole bunch of weight, but he studied no previous interpretations of the Joker. And this, I think, is pretty, is rather unheard of, uh, because everybody else who's played the Joker at least looked at their predecessors who have played the Joker to kind of give them a template or, or something to go from. All Phoenix did to prepare for this role was read a book on political assassinations so he could understand people's motivations for killing. At the end of the day, I think I'm really happy that Phoenix did not study any previous interpretations of the Joker just because that allowed him to give us his best raw, uninfluenced Joker that he thinks is appropriate for this film. <laughs> This film also stars Robert De Niro, who plays talk show host, who is integral in the creation of the whole Joker character in the film. This talk show host here kind of reminded me a little bit of uh, the talk show host that we see in The Dark Knight Returns, Dave Endocrine, uh, who brings the Joker on his show, and while the Joker is on his show, he ultimately loses his mind again after being cleared and deemed sane. We also see Brett Cullen, who plays the role of Thomas Wayne, the uh, father of Bruce Wayne, and he uh, plays a character who is running for mayor. And this is a very uh, original interpretation of Thomas Wayne as well. Traditionally in comic books, Thomas Wayne has always been seen as a philanthropist and a very, very empathetic uh, character. However, in this film, it is unlike what you have seen in Thomas Wayne before. We also have an appearance by Zazie Beetz in this film, who's most notable for her role as Domino in Deadpool 2, and a relatively new actor, Dante Pereira Olsen, Dante, great name by the way, who plays Bruce Wayne, the character that ultimately becomes Batman as an adult, and the Joker's arch nemesis. I found Robert De Niro's presence in this film especially interesting, just because so many parallels have been drawn between this new uh, Joker film and uh, De Niro's uh, previous films from the past such as uh, The Taxi Driver and King of Comedy. Also another interesting thing about this film is that Todd Phillips extensively studied Scorsese's work from uh, the 1970s and 1970s type crime films as an inspiration for this film. It's no surprise that this film ultimately ends up taking place in the 1980s and kind of has that Scorsese look to it, this really kind of dirty, dingy crime look. That being said, I'd really like to point out that this movie here is really unlike any other comic book superhero film that you have seen in the past. It's really not like them at all. This is more of a psychological thriller rather than uh, the typical comic book type movies that you are used to. 
I really particularly like this film because I find that it breaks away from that archetype of the traditional superhero film. I find that superhero films in the past few years, many of which I really, really enjoyed, are really kind of formulaic in nature. All these superhero films seem to follow a pattern. They all have these witty quips and they have these big baddies and this like huge extended cinematic universe. This film has none of that. Don't get me wrong, I like films like The Avengers and Avengers Endgame, which I believe to be the epitome of the archetype of a superhero comic book related movie. However, the thing that I find Joker does a lot better than these other films is it provides something for a wider range of viewers and a wider audience. I cannot tell you how many people out there are just really kind of turned off from comic book movies. They just kind of roll their eyes whenever a comic book, another comic book movie comes out. And some, some people I know don't even go out there and see these new films because they're not fans like myself. They're not fans of the comic book medium. So what interest do they have in going to see just another comic book movie? I'm here to tell you today, if you do not like comic book movies, you will like the Joker film. This Joker film here is not your typical comic book movie. However, I must say, if you're not really into dark or you can't really handle movies that can be interpreted as disturbing, I would probably skip out on the Joker um, because it is quite dark. I would probably just stay in and watch something a little bit more lighthearted on Netflix. Now, I don't know what the box office figures are for this film, but I think it's pretty safe to say that the Joker film is going to do well. And that's really impressive considering it has a very modest budget of $55 million. And I, that's the thing that I love really about Joker because I find that studios today that produce comic book related films feel that they have to spend hundreds of millions of dollars in order for these uh, films to be successful, but that's really not the case. Joker, I'm sure, is going to do it. It did do it and on a modest budget because it doesn't have a lot of these things that typical comic book films have like these extensive CGI scenes. I really enjoyed the fact that this film was not superficial at all. I found it was really profound and deep and, and really kind of provided social commentary on a lot of social anxieties and mass shootings and really kind of touches upon themes like mental health and what it's like to be a social outcast. If you can get over how dark the Joker film is, you're really going to find that it is a breath of fresh air and a refreshing alternative to the political propaganda that you're seeing in superhero films today. I'm looking at you, Marvel. I'm looking at you, Disney. The last time that I feel that DC did movies right was a long time ago, and that was with the Dark Knight trilogy. And I have to say, I don't even really particularly like Christian Bale as Batman, but I have to say these the, the films that Christopher Nolan directed for the Dark Knight trilogy were just outstanding. They were great. I enjoyed every single one of them. It's been a long time, but I think we finally have a great film from DC, and I really hope that this is a taste of things to come and it really makes me excited for the Batman reboot in 2021 starring Robert Pattinson. Being a fan of film and DC comics at the same time over the last few years has been very, very painful. They have put out pretty much one mediocre film after another. After the Dark Knight trilogy ended, it really kind of feels that DC struggled to establish some sort of identity with respect to where they wanted their films to go next. It just kind of feels that they were trying to do what Marvel was doing and, and, and just play catch up with Marvel. But here's the thing, DC characters and Marvel characters are very different. You can't put a Marvel spin or a Marvel flavor into DC films because it really doesn't go well with DC characters. DC characters ultimately are a lot darker than Marvel characters, so they kind of have to Keep that in mind when they're making films. And with the Joker film, I think they finally get it. Dumb steps on pussies. You're so dark! The Ajena from the DC Universe! As a matter of fact, DC Comics is so hopeful for this film that they have announced that the Joker is going to be the first of a new brand of DC films called DC Black, which is going to be these kind of standalone films, kind of similar to the Elseworlds comics that uh, DC released in the 90s, which, which were this, just these one-shot stories, which were really, really great. Although it seems that DC is offering a new brand 
to their films with DC Black. I really hope that DC Comics really kind of keeps in mind the style, feel, flavor of this film here when they're making future films for their DC Cinematic Universe. And I especially hope that Matt Reeves, the director for the new Batman film slated for a 2021 release, will keep in mind this film when making the new Batman movie. So that was my quick spoiler-free review of the new Joker film. I really hope you enjoyed it. I'm so excited about this film and I plan to do other videos related to this film. I would love to hear from you. Do you plan to go see the Joker? Have you already seen it? Tell me what you thought about it. Tell me if you're excited to go and see it. Let me know in the comments. And as always, if you enjoyed this review, please check out the channel for other geeky goodness. Consider subscribing and leave a like. Until next time, this is Dante D. I will see you all in the next episode.